I've already made a video about the changes that I was most excited about in Blender 4.1, but as I've been using this version of the software, I've noticed a couple of changes that I think are worth talking about. Some of them because they're actually pretty cool features that aren't really getting discussed very much, and some of them because they're actually very potentially disruptive changes to your workflow, and in my case, I wanted to change things back to the way that they were. So the first thing I want to talk about, I'm not even sure if it's a new feature to Blender 4.1. It might be older than that, but I've just discovered it. And I think it's pretty cool. Uh, on the eyedropper, you can obviously just select a color. But what I've recently found out is you can also select a range of colors. If you just hold down your mouse button, you can move it over. Like at the moment, I'm on the yellows. If I start moving over to the shades of red, you can see that it's now turning orange. And if I move it under the purples, it'll start to go brown because it's basically just taking an average of all the shades that I've selected there. Now, I found this really useful when I don't want a specific color from, uh, let's say, the sky, but I want to take a range of all of the shades of blue over here. I find this is actually a really nice way to do that. So I want to start off on a positive. So there we go. Now, what's less positive for me is changes that's been made to the... Um, inserting keyframes. In the past, obviously, you would place, let's say, your monkey head over here, give it a rotation, and you would press I, and that would give you a menu so you could select, say, scale or rotation or whatever you want to keyframe. Now it just puts in a general keyframe, and if we move these around, maybe scale it, press I again, it just keyframes everything, which isn't always what you want. I like to have control over specifically what I'm adding keyframes to, um, they have actually just remapped that for some reason to K. If you press K, you'll get up the, the old list that you normally get for I. But if, because of muscle memory, if you want to change that, you can actually do that in the key map. If we search for insert uh, keyframe. And then let's have a look here. Okay, so object mode. We have insert keyframe and insert insert keyframe menu it's animation keyframe insert menu so if we go down to this one insert menu and then we select always show menu now if i press i i'll get all of the normal settings that we would usually get before and obviously we'll have this on k now so maybe you want to change k so it's doing what i want to do or not it's up to you uh, another change, which I actually think is pretty cool, if you're in camera mode, what a lot of people like to do with their camera is they have this option enabled for camera to view. And then wherever they move around the viewport, the camera will follow. Now, I personally don't like using this because I constantly mess up the camera. Uh, and it's a bit of a pain in the arse to have to keep opening this menu all the time and toggle that off just so you can move around and then re-enable it again. But now, if you're in camera view, you'll actually notice that we have this symbol over here. And that allows us to just toggle that on and off. So we're moving the camera right now, as you can see with this red dot. But if we want to move around without moving the camera, we can just toggle that off. I know that's a really small thing, but if you use this a lot, I imagine that's going to make a huge difference. Uh, another thing that I'm personally not thrilled about, let's say we add a subdivision surface level of three to this monkey head by pressing control of three and we obviously want to shade it smooth so if we shade auto smooth you can now see it says shade smooth by angle and if we do that what you'll notice is we have these nasty looking creases all over the place and it's actually creased the mesh now there is some advantages to this um, having actual creases means that it no longer has to calculate the normals which should be more performant potentially in some scenarios, but I just don't like this. I don't use creases very often. I don't like the fact that it's different to the behavior that I expect from Auto Smooth. So there's a developer called Aman Deep who does some really good add ons. I'm sure I've mentioned them on this channel before. They've released this new add on uh, Disable Auto Smooth or Shade Auto Smooth. AOS, which is just old auto smooth, and that gives you the results that you would expect. You don't have the nasty crease lines, and we don't have any actual creases being put on the mesh. So I think that's great because I really hated this new uh, auto smooth, to be honest. I've been modeling 
in the older version of Blender and then bringing things over to the new version to do everything else because I really don't like that, uh, that shade smooth. So I'm glad that we have an alternative there. Let me just take this opportunity to shamelessly plug my new course, the Interior Masterclass. Interior Masterclass is a seven and a half hour course where I take you through my entire process to making a realistic interior scene of a Victorian style living room. Now this isn't a follow along tutorial where you're gonna sort of try and do everything that I do. It's just a workflow tutorial where you get to see exactly how I put a scene like this together. Other than the really boring repetitive bits, I don't skip over anything. You get to see my entire process and I put in lots and lots of detail. The aim for this was to make a room where you could point the camera and everything holds up. So for instance, you can even look at the latch on the door and you can see that there's unfinished, unpainted wood in there. This course also comes with a huge pack of really handy assets when you're making interior scenes like doorknobs and light switches. I'm currently working on a whole new module of videos for this course, which will add about three or four hours of additional content. If you have the course already or you buy it today, you'll get all the updates in the future for free. Check out the link in the description to pick up a copy of the course today. And so with that being said, uh, I think that's everything I want to talk about today. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you later with another video.